Good afternoon, everyone. I am Diane Hull. I am here um, from Career Services, and we are here to talk a little bit about preparing for the Biosciences Career Fair, which will be held next Friday in Houston Hall from 12 to 4. Um, so I am, uh, just to tell you a little bit about me and a little bit about what I do here at Career Services, I'm the Senior Associate Director responsible for graduate students and postdocs in nine of Penn schools. And I am one of the people that work to plan the Biosciences Career Fair, which we have coming next uh, Friday. And we hope that you all will join us. And so for any of you who have not been to a career fair in a while or who have never been to a career fair before, um, this program is for you and we're gonna get started right away. So if you have any questions as we go along, please feel free to drop them in the chat. I will be offering you the opportunity to um, ask questions if you have them. This program is being recorded as well. So let's get started. Okay. So again, my name is Diane Hall. I'm a Senior Associate Director here in Career Services, and we're excited here to talk to you today about preparing for the Biosciences Career Fair. Um, so what we are talking about today is career fairs. Why are they valuable? And again, we're primarily here to talk about the Biosciences Career Fair, but there is an all industries virtual career fair on Friday. And while we're here, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that as well. Um, so we're going to be talking a little bit about in-person career fairs and how you would want to prepare for those. But we are also going to talk a little bit about how to maximize your experience in the virtual fair if you so choose to attend this one this Friday or another one in the future. But what we really want to talk about is making the most of career fairs and how you can use them to your advantage as a part of your job search. And then we want to talk a little bit about resume books. Some of you may have seen that the uh, Biosciences Career Fair has the opportunity for you to submit your resume to employers in advance of the fair, and the deadline for that is midnight tonight. So we're going to tell you briefly about how you can do that. So let's talk a little bit about why a career fair might be helpful for you. Um, some of you may have an idea, um, but some of you may be wondering, what could you get out of a career fair? And so let me tell you a little bit about this. So Number one, you do not have to be actually looking for a job or internship to benefit from a career fair. You absolutely can go to a career fair and talk to employers of interest, even if you know that you're a PhD student and you're going to be here for several more years and you're not imminently on the job market. Employers pay money, a lot of money to come to career fairs, and they are here because they want to talk to you. You are not bothering by you are not bothering them by answering uh, asking them questions. They want to answer your questions. Um, so you coming to a career fair really is why they're here. The more conversations that employers have now, the more likely they are to come back to post jobs, to do um, recruiting on campus. So you attending the career fair and engaging with employers encourages them and energizes them to return. If you want to learn more about an employer, right, it just seems interesting, you can ask questions. If you are thinking that you might be interested in something, but you're not really sure if you're a good fit for it, coming to a career fair can be a great place to find out, is your background a good fit for this? And most importantly, if some point in the future, either the next day or the next month or the next year, you think you might want to be applying for a particular role, you can take what you learn from these conversations and it will help me help you make a better version of your resume and it will help you make a better interviewer. <clears throat> After you have participated in a career fair, there's a couple of different things that you can gain. So one is you might decide what skills you wanna gain while you're here on campus. You might say, oh, I really wanna do this one particular thing um, and I'm missing some of the skills. Are there things that I can be doing while I'm a student here at Penn in order to gain some of those skills? You can absolutely be able to write better resumes targeted to employers. You're going to hear an employer talk about what they're looking for, what's important to them, and you may want to find some ways to get that information into your resume. When you do submit uh, a resume for an internship or a full-time job, you can name drop people that you have met in a cover letter or in an interview. There will be many alums at this career fair next week, and you can definitely follow up with them for informational interviews. And you can really identify things that you want to do to make the next steps. So here's where you're going to find on Handshake information about the Biosciences Career Fair. Um, again, all, all these slides will be available at the end of the presentation today. And so there's links in here um, so you can sort of follow along. This is the page that you're going to see. Um, telling you a little bit about the fair or other fairs that you might want to attend here at Penn. Um, again, the Biosciences Career Fair is next Friday, September 27th, 
from 12 to 4 in Houston Hall. It's in Bodek Lounge, which is on the first floor um, when you walk in. You will want to register for the fair ahead of time if you have not done so already. It's not imperative that you register, but it is helpful. Um, if an employer cancels or posts a new job, you will get notified by that based on the fact that you have pre-registered for the fair. So if you haven't registered for the fair ahead of time, please do go ahead and do so. Um, you'll get reminders as well. So what do you need to do to participate? You need to register, but again, you don't have to, but it's a good idea. You will need to bring your pen card when you come to the career fair. We tap in every student and postdoc who that we serve, who attends the fair um, to make sure that you are there and also to print you a name tag, which is really, really important um, because you'll get a name tag sticky uh, so that you don't have to make your own. If you would like, you can bring copies of your resume. Most of the employers may not take paper resumes. They may have a QR code in which you can submit, but it's always a good idea to have some as a, as a point of reference. <clears throat> We're going to be talking about this in a little bit, but your elevator pitch for preparing a verbal introduction about you and your experiences and interests, and most importantly, bring questions for the employers. Um, they really want to talk to you and they want to learn about what's interesting to you, but it's best if you have some questions for them. Again, I mentioned that this Friday is the All Industries Virtual Career Fair. We have several employers who are participating virtually. Um, this one you really do need to register for before you can go ahead and sign up to meet with an employer, either in a one-on-one -on -one session or a group session. So you do need to register. Again, you can do that on Handshake. So here's a little bit about what you might see when you're thinking a little bit about a traditional career fair versus a virtual career fair. So um, this traditional career fair pictures are actual pictures from um, Penn career fairs here on campus. The virtual career fair is that it's virtual. You're either meeting with employers on Handshake, you're maybe meeting with them on Zoom or Teams, depending on what platform they like. Um, but the interactions can be similar, although different settings. So regardless of whether you are approaching a virtual fair or an in-person fair, let's talk a little bit about how you can navigate a career fair with confidence. So the first is to identify your goals. And again, it just has to be the goals for the career fair, not necessarily this big question all about your future goals of what it is you want to do with your life. But what are the goals for this time period of interaction that you would like to accomplish? Research you can do ahead of time, right? So things that I think you might wanna be thinking about before you come to the career fair or participate virtually. Sample questions for employers and how are you actually gonna prepare? So let, let's talk about these details. So the first is what kind of goals might you have, right? Um, identifying your expectations and what you want to accomplish. Maybe your goal is just, I want to meet with these two employers and learn a little bit more about them. You want to gather specific information about specific employers, ask questions, really connect with people who can assist you in your goals, right? So the, this is an opportunity to speak with people who work for an organization that seems interesting to you, connecting with them, asking questions, finding them on LinkedIn later. All of these things will be helpful to you. Identifying ways that you can be a better candidate, right? Lots and lots of people have interests in something, but they're not quite sure if they're qualified. And even if they are um, interested that they're qualified, even if they know that they might be qualified, they know that there's some things that maybe they could do to be better qualified. And so helping to identify some of the things, are there clubs that you can join? Are there classes you can take? Are there skills you can develop that might make you better? recognize that employers have goals too, right? Like they want to come and meet people. They really don't want to come and just stand here all afternoon. They really have some goals that they'd like to meet. They have perhaps some hiring needs, connection needs, but really articulating your value, thinking a little bit more about what you might be able to do for some of these employers and maybe a little bit less about what they can do for you, but really like what is it about you that might help these employers in reaching some of their goals what, what sort of experiences do you have that you want to articulate? Doing some research ahead of time is helpful. So again, you can go on Handshake. You can see the employers that are registered to attend. There's a couple of things that I think would be helpful. So let's say if of, of the employers, you identify five. You think there's these five I really want to talk to. What are some of the things you should do ahead of time? One is see what positions they have open on Handshake, whether they're ones that you're interested in or qualified for or not. It's good to know what they have out there. 
look on their website. Um, employers have to actually input the jobs into Handshake. So sometimes you will see that there are jobs on their website that don't make their way to Handshake. And so trying to get a sense of sort of what it is they're looking for, I think is, is helpful. Look them up on LinkedIn, look them up on other social media, follow them on any social media that you're involved with. That's a great way to learn a little bit more. Are they in the news? Is there any kind of news story that you can find um, about them? What other information do you need, right? So this helps to generate questions that you might think that you could ask them. So let's say that you are a postdoc here at Penn and you're in your first year and you know that you are going to be here for three or four years. And so you're not really actually looking um, at, at an imminent application at this point in time, but you want to know about future opportunities. You can ask them some questions about their timeline for hiring. When is it that they um, think about new kinds of opportunities? Maybe you've heard from some of this research that you've done, this deep dive ahead of time in a news story, they have some a new project coming up, you can ask them about it. Timeline for applying. If you're someone who's graduating in May, or if you're someone who's graduating in August, maybe you're a December 2024 grad, December 2025 grad, all of that can sort of help you figure out and ask them, hey, I'm not graduating until December 2025, but your, your organization is really interesting to me. When would be a good time for me to apply? You know, how far in advance of graduation do you want to hear from me? Everyone always thinks about these large organizations that recruit very far in advance, and some employers do that, but most don't, right? So while there is a lot of interviewing going on right now in September for people that are graduating in May, there's a lot that's going to happen between now and then. And understanding what that timeline is from the employer's perspective is good. Determining what we call fit, right? How well do you fit with what is it they're looking for? These are all things you can think about. And are there other opportunities that they might have in the next couple of weeks and months to connect? So Career Services works with a lot of employers to host employer information sessions. Sometimes these are virtual. Sometimes these are in person. They're all on Handshake. Do they have anything coming up in the next couple of weeks or months that maybe you might like to participate in? Are, there part, are, are they partnering with a club on campus that you might want to um, involve them in? So questions that you can ask at the fair, right? Because you always want to have some questions that you're prepared to ask them. So the first is training and support for new staff, right? So if you are someone who envisions yourself as someone who could potentially be um, a new staff member, you might say, hey, can you tell me a little bit about the first few because on the job, what kind of training do you offer? What qualities do they feel make people successful at their organization? Perhaps in some of your deep dive and some of your research ahead of time, you've looked at new initiatives or programs you've read about. Can you ask about that? Office culture, environment, you can ask if a role is hybrid, if it's 100% in person, 100% virtual. Maybe you have seen a particular position posted on Handshake or on their website or on LinkedIn, and you want to ask them a little bit more about positions that you've seen posted. What to expect with the hiring process, right? Let's say that you are talking to an employer, you know that they have a deadline coming up um, it, you know, for an application maybe next week, and you want to say, okay, so if the deadline is next week, can you let me know sort of when you might be making decisions about who to interview, that kind of thing. These are all fair questions. So once you've done a little thinking ahead of time about your research and the questions, you're going to want to actually arrive at the fair. And so what are some things that you want to think about when you arrive at the fair and how you're going to greet them? So we're going to talk some general, and then we're going to get more specific about what we call the elevator pitch. So the first is arrival and greeting. Smile, right? Everyone's nervous. Everyone's a little bit anxious. But it's always nice to smile and be friendly. Shaking hands in our post-COVID world is really optional. You can offer a hand, but you don't need to. It's really up to you. Your 30-second intro, which is really what we call your elevator pitch, um, is who are you, related experience, what you want to know, and conveying interest and enthusiasm, right? And then you really want to ask a question. Um, these are, this is an example of a good question. Can you share with me more information about what type of candidate you're looking for and what kind of skills they might bring? You do not want to go to an employer and say, so tell me what you do, because what they know is that you have the opportunity to look that up ahead of time. So you want to make sure you do that. So let's talk about this elevator pitch. So for any of you who are not familiar with what an elevator pitch is, an elevator pitch is a phrase that we use to refer to about a 30 second greeting, about the time in which you might take to ride an elevator with someone else. And in that 30 seconds, 
you're going to really in take the opportunity to introduce yourself, but it's gotta be quick and it's gotta be concise. Couple of things, your name and your degree. What are you majoring in? What's your graduate degree in? When are you graduating? They will have a name tag, but it's always helpful. You will have a name tag, but it's always helpful to introduce yourself. Your career goals, your interest in their organization, your interest in a specific position, and any kind of relevant skills and experience that you have to share, right? So very quick, who are you? What are you doing here at Penn? What are some of your career goals? Why are they interesting? And what kind of skills might you have that would be interesting to them? So very quick. If you want to learn more about career fair elevator pitches, there's actually a great video. Um, career Services has partnered with something called Beyond Graduate School. It's actually designed for master's students, um, but any Penn student can access this. And they have a great video on putting together career fair elevator pitches. So you've done your research ahead of time, you've thought of your questions, you've gone to the career fair, you've given your elevator pitch and met a few people. What is it you wanna do next? After you leave the fair, what is it you want to do? And that's really your follow-up. So a couple of things, know how to follow up. So you really want to be reiterating your interest and propose next steps, right? Asking about the best way to stay in contact throughout the process. Um, considering sending a brief thank you email, and then leveraging the information that you gained in your next resume or your next interview. So you really want to think a little bit about what is the next plan. The one thing I really want people to, to remember when you go to a career fair is after the fair, be sure to write some notes to yourself so that you can remember. Because you may meet someone on September 27th who seems really interesting, and then it might be October 27th or November 27th, and you see a job get posted at that organization and you want to follow up, but you can't remember who you met with. You can't remember what they said. So really keeping a, keeping an eye on that as, as you go through the fair is helpful. If anyone has any specific questions about in-person career fairs, go ahead and drop them in the chat. I am going to move on to virtual career fairs. So virtual career fairs, let's talk a little bit about the all industries virtual career fair, which is coming up this Friday. So what are some of the perks of a virtual fair? There are no lines and no time constraints you can schedule in advance. There are two ways in which you can interact with employers, one-on-one -on -one, uh, sessions and group info sessions, right? In which you're in a session with other students. So the, the advantage of this is that you know exactly what your schedule is ahead of time. So it's this Friday, so you can easily plan out what it is you might like to be doing based on employer availability. Um, I do really think that the 10-minute ten on, ten one-on-one -on -one sessions can be really valuable. It's time for you to interact directly with an employer, ask the questions. Um, it's really kind of friendly for introverts. I actually really, really like the group info sessions as well. They're very low pressure. If something just seems remotely interesting, you can hop in on a group info session and really kind of stay in the background. Um, and there's no issues about really what to wear other than what you would wear on Zoom. Um, you don't have to manage your bags, your books, your notebooks, name tags. You don't have to worry about shaking hands or not shaking hands. So there's really some advantages, I think, to the, to the virtual fair. What you do wanna make sure is that your handshake profile is very well complete before you go into the virtual fair um, because that's the information that they'll have about you ahead of time. So you're gonna to wanna to go to handshake and update your profile and update your settings. Um, and when I say settings, what you really wanna do <clears throat> is make sure that your profile is public, makes it easier for the employers to find you. Um, so here are some things that you can add to your profile. You can share with them a little bit about what it is you're looking for. Are you looking for a full-time job, an internship? You can add a summary, you can add skills. You wanna double check that your school year, that your major, that your GPA, all those things are correct. You can also take the time to update your interests. What kind of job types are you interested in? What kind of um, locations interest you or their particular cities, roles, industries? You can really take a look at um, the more information you share with the employer, the more helpful it is to them. You can check your location. If you want to add your pronouns, you can add your pronouns. Um, and again, you could also update your privacy 
and your work authorization. This is all helpful information to an employer as they're you know, gathering information about the people that they've interviewed, that they've interviewed or met with. You can upload a resume, which I highly recommend that you do. If you attend a group session, even if you have your camera off and you never interact with them, they will get a download of all of the students who that who attended their group session. And so if you sign up, you know, attending is really important, but they may also want to take a peek at your resume. Also, I highly recommend that you up, update a resume. Up, I'm sorry, upload a resume so that you can um, share that with employers prior to an individual one-on-one -on -one appointment in the virtual fair as well. So registration is open. Here's how you would go about and register. Now, I, I will tell you that I took these screenshots yesterday, so I can't guarantee all of these spots are still available, but they, they might be. So once you register for the fair, you're going to click on available sessions right here at the top, and that will open up. And you can see as of yesterday, Merck had several opportunities to participate in a group session um, on next uh, this Friday. The Association of Public Health Laboratories also had multiple group sessions available and one-on-one um, -on -one sessions as well. So once you click on that one-on-one -on -one session, if there's more than one recruiter who's coming, you can even see who the recruiter is that you're signing up to meet with. A couple of best practices for virtual fairs that I would recommend. Avoid scheduling back-to-back -back sessions if possible. Um, you really are limited to 10 minutes um, and it can be really hard, especially if, a, if a, an employer is using a different platform than Handshake. So you've got to get in Handshake, find the Zoom, quick move to another place. And so really I would avoid that if you can. Group sessions, again, I think are wonderful. I think they're really a great opportunity for you to check out um, you know, what might be out there. And I, I really think you should, can be open-minded, even if an employer is not 100% sure that you're interested, I would think about it. Check back to see additional availability. You know, what you see today may change tomorrow. Some students may cancel. Um, and so uh, availability may change. Identify an appropriate place, you know, especially for the one-on-ones. You want to make sure you're not sitting on Lucas Walk on your phone, having a conversation with an employer. You do want to have something that's quiet with some lighting, a few distractions, and a, a suitable background. Semi-professional attire, at least from the waist up, you know, wear shorts if you like. So I put together a few group session tips. So um, you'll find group sessions in the same place. They usually do end with a Q&A when you can pose questions directly to the employer. So again, that's why I think these can be really helpful to attend because you really want to take an opportunity to interact with an employer and you can do that this way. We really do recommend that you stay for an entire session. They will see if you leave early um, and they will receive a list of attendees and their resumes after the session. Um, so again, if you register to attend, I would recommend that you do. Um, most, maybe many of these sessions take place within the Handshake platform, but it can vary. So you really do need to take, take a look. Um, you know, are they wanting you to go to Teams? Are they wanting you to go to Google Meet or Zoom or something outside of the Handshake platform? Um, during one-on-one -on -one sessions, be on time. You can enter the video sessions five minutes early, but if you are late, you do not get extra time at the end. Introduce yourself, smile, ask informed questions, take notes on the conversation, and certainly make sure that you know the name of the person that you're talking to so that you can inquire about next steps. If they don't offer an email, you can ask for one. Um, and definitely monitor your own time leave time for wrapping up. You know, be mindful that they very likely have another student right after you. So anything that you can do to keep mind on that is, is, is good. Here are some quick technical considerations. Make sure you're joining with a preferred browser. Safari is not a preferred browser. Chrome and Firefox are um, for Handshake. Have a link to your resume ready for one-on-one -on -one meetings. Again, after you attend, they will have access to download, but it might be nice for you to be able to screen share if you'd like. Be aware of the sound when you're joining a meeting, mute for group sessions, unmute for one-on-one. -on -one. And for when you take a look at these a little bit later, here are some uh, five guides that Handshake has put together for you to really help you in uh, preparing for virtual affairs. They have a great guide overall for the virtual affair, how to sign up and manage those tips, acing your virtual interview for questions, and the 10 biggest virtual career fair questions answered. So again, for either of these um, in-person versus virtual fair, things that you wanna think about. 
Um, be sure to update your profile, make it, make it visible to employers. Update your resume. You can create a shareable link if you'd like. Decide on a quiet professional space with strong internet to attend, um, professional or business casual, and review and research the employers ahead of time, just as you would for an in-person fair. If you are looking for some great questions that you can ask, um, as you think a little bit about writing resumes, I recommend that you take a look at our informational interviewing guide for graduate students and postdocs. Again, this is not just a document that is helpful to graduate students and postdocs, but I think this can really help you think about what kind of questions might you ask in a, in a, in a career fair that then would help you with a better resume further on. Again, here are some questions that I think you really want to take a look at. Um, I was looking at your website, saw that you're involved in this. Can you tell me more about this? In your job posting on Handshake, one of the skills mentioned was this. What are some of the things that you look for? When, you're, when are your internships usually posted? What's the best way to apply? Can you tell me about your roles, which are a good fit for someone with an advanced degree? I'm not applying for roles right now, but I want to make sure I'm a good candidate. What advice would you give? And other ways that you might engage with Penn students. These are all great questions that could almost be applied to most employers, but you'll see some of them do require a little bit of research, particularly that second one. You've got to know what they have posted on Handshake so you can ask them. Again, talking to people to gather information will. This is the best way for you to figure out what skills and experiences are valued by employers. It will allow you to hear a little bit about the lingo that they're using, um, a little bit about the phrasing, the words. They're talking a little bit about what they do and why they do it. This is how you're going to figure out how to write your resume. So just like we here at Penn have lots of acronyms and abbreviations that don't make sense to people outside of Penn, the working world is the same way. And any way that you can use those words and phrases in your resume is helpful. Resume should really illustrate skills and action that are relevant to the job, and that's key. So learning more about the job will help you make a better resume. I mentioned when we first hopped on that we do have resume books for the biosciences career fairs. Um, the deadline is midnight tonight to submit your resume. Um, I know Lisa dropped the link in the chat earlier, um, so you can take a look at that. Um, if you are looking for some ways in which to build your resume, there's, there's a great resume channel on our website, and this is right here. We have um, undergraduate resume templates, masters and PhDs and postdocs, and in, including some specific school resources there. So if you need assistance with your resume between now and midnight when you're submitting, I highly recommend you take a look at this. Here's the information about the resume books. As you can see, there are a couple of different um, Resume books, depending on who you are. Are you looking for an internship? Are you looking for a full-time job is the first question. After that is, are you looking for, um, are you an undergraduate? Are you a master's? Are you a doctoral student or postdoc, right? And so you can put your resume in the appropriate book. Again, midnight tonight is the deadline. The link is in the chat. If you want to take a deeper dive into preparing for career fairs, as I mentioned er earlier, Beyond Graduate School, which is a platform really designed for master students, but really any student at Penn with a Penn key is welcome to take a look. They did a virtual boot camp just last week, um, and they have multiple programs about how to go into a career fair with confidence. These are 30-minute videos. They have chapters that are marked with what's being discussed at each chapter. So it's really easy for you to hop in here and, and do a little bit of a deeper dive than maybe we did here. So with that, I'm going to take your questions. Um, I would love for any questions that you have about the biosciences career fair, about career fairs in general, any questions about career services. Um, I'm putting this QR code up. So if you would like to see the slides that are here with the actual links in the different uh, resources that I talked about today, you are welcome to take a look at this. Again, this video will go up, but it will probably take a few days. And so I wanted to make the slides available immediately to anyone who attended. So I will leave that up there. And I will again, invite you to ask me any questions at all that you might have in the chat. And I will give you another moment to see if you have any questions. And if not, we will conclude. All right, so someone's asking the question, 
how should international students approach career fairs? Unfortunately, many employers are often discouraged when one mentions that they have international status. So this is a really, really great question. Um, I still think attending a career fair as an international student who's concerned that perhaps your need for CPT or OPT may give pause to an employer. I do know that many of the employers who are coming next Friday are okay with international students, right? What you don't necessarily need to do is share with an employer, if you're not immediately applying for a job, you don't need to share with them your, your status as an international student if you choose not to, right? You can certainly approach a career fair as a way to ask questions, as a way to learn a little bit more about the employers, um, and you can take that information with you. Um, you are welcome to ask them questions about sponsorship, but I often think that's you know a little bit too early to be asking that question. You're just collecting information at this point. Um, and so I would really approach it as information gathering and less as a place where you're going to find a new job opportunity. The reality is, is most people do not find jobs at career fairs, they find information. And so if you look at it as a way that you can find information as, a as opposed to a place that you're gonna find a job or internship, you may, you may have a little bit of luck there. That's a great question though. Uh, someone's asking the question, were we supposed to receive a meeting link for group sessions? Did anyone receive that or just me did not receive it? Um, if you're talking about group sessions for the All Industries Career Fair on Friday, um, those should be in Handshake. Um, it's also possible sometimes if the employers have decided that they're going to use Zoom or they're not going to use Handshake, they may email it to you. Um, but the, the fair is not for two more days. So it may be that they just haven't released that yet. Just like we today um, for this program and any of our virtual programs at Career Services, the Zoom link isn't released until five minutes ahead of time. They may not share that with you ahead of time. Great question from Rebecca. What is the best way to take notes during the fair? Are notebooks provided to attendees? No, we do not provide notebooks to attendees. Um, what I would suggest that you do is however you usually take notes. Are you looking, do you do on your phone? Do you do notebooks? Um, you can certainly go in and out of the fair as much as you like, right? Within the 12 to four time frame. So if you go in, you meet with an employer and then you wanna take some notes, you can always come out of the room, go somewhere else in Houston Hall, take some notes and then go back into the fair. So it's really kind of however you like to take notes. Um, that's what I would do. I would probably not stand in front of an employer and you know take notes while you're talking to them because you really wanna be having that personal interaction with them. Um, so I would do your best to you know remember some of the things that they're sharing with you. But you, you certainly don't have to enter the fair and then go to see all the employers at once. You can come in and out. Um, there may be some quiet pockets depending on how crowded it is in the room where you can kind of step back and, and take some notes there as well. But again, you can go in and out. Any other questions at all? Okay, so we will end and I hope to see you all on Friday, Thank, uh, next Friday, sorry, a week from Friday. Um, and so if you have any questions at all, please let us know and we are here to help. Again, register for the fair on Handshake and you can register for the All Industries Fair as well. Thank you, have a good day.